In this video, you'll learn about log monitoring and triggers in Zabbix. To get started, go to Monitoring and then Hosts. From here, we're going to select our host, Inventory, and then go to Triggers underneath Configuration. Here we see a list of triggers as it relates to our template that we chose when we created our host. What we're going to do is we're going to create a trigger in the top right menu. I'm going to make my screen bigger so you can see. So the name is going to be the name that you, um, you see in your, um, your global view underneath the problem section. We're going to call this Nginx, for example. Your severity is going to be also the, the severity that you see in your, your, um, your global view. And you can set this up later to um, basically only receive a push, push notification should you have uh, sort of an average or high or you know, disaster level um, severity. And here comes the fun part. To set up our trigger, we're going to do a few things. I'm not going to go through the expression constructor um, because I think it's going to be simpler just to understand the syntax. And so the way we do this is we open up a curly brace. We're going to identify our host name. So in this example, I'm just going to call it host. Okay. And next, we're going to pull out log. And this is going to be um, how we um, look into a log. I'm not going to make this a disaster. I'm going to make this more inf information. Okay. Next, I'm going to specify my uh, full path, and I'm going to be doing that like this. Oops, log, nginx, error, log. I'm going to close my bracket. I'm going to pull out a method for regex. And now we're going to define our string as it's going to show up in the log. So I'm going to be looking for something called maybe warning, for example. I'm going to specify my interval. So this is my last uh, of t, is what it's called, where the t refers to time. And this is going to be 30 seconds. So 30 is 30 seconds, 60 would be one minute. I'm going to close my parentheses, close my curly brace, and I'm going to equal out 1, where 1 is true and 0 would be false. But in this case, obviously, we're looking for the string um, warning inside of our log, which is here, our error log for Nginx. And that's going to be uh, sort of a trigger every 30 seconds. So with inside of this this window of time. And so once we're done here, we can scroll to the bottom, make sure it's enabled, and then add it to our template. So we can find that log information underneath our latest data. And so we're going to go to monitoring. We're going to go to latest data. And I already have a filter here for a, a Rails log. You can type anything you want up here in the name. You remember the name that we gave it was Nginx, Nginx but because I didn't actually save it, um, you're not going to see it up here. So in this example, I'm just going to show you one of my actual logs. So I'm going to look at the history of this log, and bada bing, bada boom. We have all of our log data populating here as it relates to what I am um, sort of grepping out in my log. So in short, the way this works is your client-side active agent will read the log data until your string appears. So the string that we're looking for in our case was um, called warning, right? And so the agent will notify Zabbix, the Zabbix server, where your trigger is configured. And the trigger will populate via the global view, um, which you're going to see on your main panel, which is over here. Depend your global view will look very different than mine, but here's my global view. Right, so your, your error is going to pop up right here. Your trigger is going to pop up right here in problems. And if you set up um, push notifications, you'll get a push notification to your mobile device, which is really cool. You can also set it up with email notifications if you'd like. And so the difference between active and passive agent modes um, are as followed. So if your Zabbix agent is in passive mode, Zabbix server must connect to the agent you know, and pull for values related to your template. So the polar waits until the agent responds with a value um, or set of values. The Zabbix server then gets the value back and the connection is closed. Right, where active mode, this is very different, all data processing is performed on the agent, so without the interference of polars. The agent requests the you know, respective values and then performs the monitoring and pushes the data to Zabbix server, which in my opinion is much more efficient. So because your data is flowing over the wire in an unencrypted fashion, I would highly recommend a you know, minimum level of encryption, um, PSK encryption. So to get more information about encryption, you can go to Configuration, and then your Hosts, and you're going to see your agent encryption here. And I'm using PSK in my example, um, but you can use PSK or uh, a certified authority.
Well, thanks for watching this video. Let me know if you'd like a follow-up video showcasing push notifications um, or even PSK level encryption.